In this FL Studio tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the wobbler to manipulate Harmer inside of Patcher. I know that sounds complicated, but this is much easier than trying to learn Harmer from scratch. And you'll see why here in a minute. To load up a Patcher, make sure you add the instrument version to your channel rack. And then you'll get a screen like this. From there, you could go to the presets and scroll down to XY Labs and select the wobbler. What I recommend from there is to go into the map and actually open up Harmer inside of Patcher. And that way you could see exactly what's going on as you manipulate these controls. So let's just listen to what this sounds like right off the bat. So just holding a key down, we already get a wobble bass. And to get that sound, all we're modulating is just the volume, the cutoff frequency, and the resonance here. Very typical for a wobble bass. This first section is the oscillator. So this will change the oscillator from a triangle to a square, to a sine, to a saw, or anything in between. And the way they accomplish this inside of Harmer, you have an A side and a B side. And on the A side, you have your triangle wave, your sine wave, and then on the B side, we have our saw wave and our square wave. So with this XY pad, we could adjust this between the four waveforms. I'm gonna leave it right there for now. Next is the timing section, and this is literally the timing of the modulation. So right now we're on eighth notes, we could switch it to, to 16th note, one sixth. And you can even combine these. And then you have open time too. I definitely recommend automating this. If you're an EDM producer, you could just right click, create automation clip, and you can automate any of that. That way you could change the timing on the fly and create some really nice rhythm. This first knob is key follow or key tracking, and that's actually changing the keyboard tracking for your filters. So the higher you go up on the keyboard, the more open the filter is gonna sound. Versus down here, it's gonna sound more cut off. But if we had keyboard tracking turned all the way down, it's gonna be the same filter, no matter what, up top and on bottom. This bass knob, you'll notice it doesn't do anything until you turn on the timing, because the bass knob is basically just a blend between your modulated timing and their original sound. So if I turn on the timing and increase the bass knob, you'll hear that the original signal comes back in. I'm gonna leave it there for now. The amount is literally the amount of modulation. SMTH, that stands for smooth, so you could smooth out the timing here. You'll hear that it literally just smooths out. This volume knob isn't as self-explanatory as you would think. If you turn this down, the sound actually gets louder, and that's because the main signal is coming back in. Versus turned all the way up, you're definitely getting less bass frequency. So I'm not exactly sure what they're manipulating with this volume right there, but either way, always just use your ears and just know that this is gonna be more bassy, and this is gonna be cleaner. Then you have cutoff, which is related to your cutoff frequency. Without the cutoff, you get more high frequencies. With it on, you're cutting off more of the frequency. Resonance. You can always use that to help it cut through the mix. Unison panning will spread the sound out further than what it is right now. Same thing with unison pitch. And then I always recommend going into the unison settings and actually changing this manually. So we're, right now we're on order three. Let's just scroll through. I'm gonna leave it on six. Same thing with this classic here. 
I really like the special Hertz version of the Unison, but let's just listen to what they sound like. I actually like blurred right now. You also have an alternate distribution of the Unison option right here. Depending on the mix, you might want one or the other. The next three green knobs are referring to the phaser section. So if we turn up the phaser mix, phaser width, phaser offset, This pink knob is referring to the harmonizer, and then we're gonna go in and adjust the harmonizer settings after we increase the basic amount. Again, the advantage of using these patcher presets, these are already routed in terms of the modulations and whatnot, so you can see that the amount knob on the harmonizer is moving on its own. And it would take quite a while to set all this up to get all these modulated. But from there, let's go ahead and increase the width. I'm gonna leave the rest of the harmonizer alone. I will go into more detail about the different sections inside of Harmer in my in-depth Harmer tutorial, but this is just showing you how to quickly manipulate Harmer with these patcher presets. This auto, I should have brought this up at the very beginning. This will keep your volume consistent no matter what settings you change. That should be the very first thing that you should do. So increase this all the way up and now you have auto gain selected. And I'm also just now realizing they modulate the auto gain feature as well and that's really creating some extra movement, some extra bite to the sound. Next you have clip, which is adjusting your clip fader right here. So the more you increase this, the more you'll cut off the sound. You can also adjust the types of clipping here. So right now we're on high threshold. I'll just scroll through the different ones. I really like the second to last one, which is hard low threshold. I'm gonna leave that right about there. Then you have your second cutoff, which is referring to your second filter right here. So you'll see that this isn't moving at all. As I increase this. Now we got more movement on our filters and then you can increase the resonance of that too. I'm actually gonna leave that turned all the way off. And then we have blur, which is controlling the blur section here. And all this is gonna do is just increase the harmonic blur amount. And I'm actually gonna leave that there. And then we have our sub oscillator, which is controlling this fader right here. So we're just adding the first fundamental of our sub. Make sure you're wearing headphones or you have uh, decent speakers to hear what's going on with that sub oscillator. Then you have your post filter, and this is referring to the filter inside of the distortion unit. So it will filter out everything before the distortion or before this filter, I should say, but everything. But I will say that the, that the only effects that come after the distortion are the chorus, the delay, reverb, and compression. So that adds some movement to the filter on our overall mix. 
And again, you could go through and change the distortions here. Right now we're on soft saturation. I'm gonna leave it on rubber. Now we can increase the chorus and you'll hear an even bigger sound. And because the sound got so much bigger, now I'm gonna go back and adjust the sub and turn that down because we're getting too much sub now. Much better. And now we have prism, which is referring to the prism section right here. And this is just going to increase the amount of prism that we have. Now I'm going to adjust some of the settings without going into detail about what these do. Just click on the five different settings and use your ears. It's just adding more grit, more movement to the sound. And then you have pitch, which is just going to modulate the pitch up and down. So definitely use this as an automation clip. When you right click, you'll notice that it doesn't have the option to automate it. Just click activate. And now when you right click, you'll have the create automation clip option. And then last but not least in the parameter section, we have distortion. If you weren't using Harmer for EDM before, I hope that you definitely do now. Let's move on to the last section of Wobbler, which is the global setting. So at the top here, you have your unison controls. You could change the order amount, go all the way up to nine for a super saw. I'm gonna leave it on four for us right now. And then you could change the phase. You could switch to the alternative mode. Even though this is a slider, it's really just an on and off button. I'm gonna leave it on first setting. And then you have unison types, which I showed earlier. This next slider is your filter setting. So you could switch between your first or second filter or a blend in between. I like it right there. And then next, this random slider is referring to the phase of your waveforms here. Next, you have harmonizer width, and this is going to add more metallic sound to the left and right speakers. Vibrato, which I described earlier. P-type stands for the phaser type. I'm going to leave it on Hertz. Then we have Dimension, and that's just controlling the delay there. Then we have the Tremolo, which will modulate the volume of our sound up and down. I can also hear that it's moving the sound left and right as well. 
And then last but not least, we have this pre-fader, which will drive the entire signal into all of our effects. So if we turn this all the way down, we won't get any sound, but as we increase this, we'll get more and more sound being driven into the signal. Notice that because we have the auto gain turned all the way up, when the sound came in, it didn't get any louder as we increased this to the top. We just heard the effects smashing the, the signal more and more. Leave it right about there. And then you have your overall output knob. And there you have it, the wobbler inside of Patcher to control Harmer for sound design. Again, in the future, I will do an in-depth tutorial on Harmer itself so that you can learn the ins and outs of it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment if you have any questions about Harmer, Patcher, or Wobbler. And I will be sure to answer that in upcoming videos. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.